This is the story of two Southern California natives, P-22 and P-32. Odd names, I know, but with a simple explanation. See, P stands for puma, or mountain lion, sometimes called a cougar or panther. They're numbered in the order they were discovered. We begin our tale with P-22. This photograph gave him celebrity status, but he's something of an enigma. In 2012, wildlife biologist Miguel Ordignano was reviewing hidden camera photos taken in Griffith Park. I put in the SD card into my computer, started hoping to see some bobcats, and all of a sudden I see this massive rear end of an animal in front of my computer screen. I knew what I saw, it was a mountain lion, and mountain lion's butt to be specific. By the time he was first caught on camera in 2012, he was already two years old, the equivalent of a young adult in cougar years. Genetic testing later revealed that P-22 was born around 40 miles away in the Santa Monica Mountains. When mountain lions reach a year of age, they must leave to find a new territory to call home. When P-22 came of age, he headed east. This is beautiful. I know. I Beth Pratt Bergstrom of the National Wildlife Federation told me her take on his journey. He struck out and did something I think is just quite remarkable, which is headed right into the middle of LA. <laughs> he started journeying from the Santa Monica Mountains, crosses two of the busiest freeways in the country, somehow. I don't know about you, but I barely make it across the 405 driving. <laughs> you know, this cat somehow gets across the 101 and the 405. These are ghost cats, and he definitely has employed his ancestor's gift of stealth to, to find a new home. National Park Service biologist Jeff Sickich told me that the leading cause of death of mountain lions is other mountain lions. And that's the toughest time, especially for young males in the Santa Monica Mountains. You see, they need around 200 square miles to roam, and male lions will often kill rivals competing for territory. A mountain lion in Griffith Park defies the odds. Griffith Park is thought to be too small for a mountain lion. And a large male mountain lion, which need more space than females, usually need about 200 square miles of space. And Griffith Park only offers eight square miles. But Jeff says that P-22 is managing. It was great for him in here. He, there was no competition from other mountain lions. He's killing and eating his natural prey, predominantly mule deer followed by coyotes and raccoons. He's also all alone. In the fall of 2013, deep in the Santa Monica Mountains, a tiny kitten opened his baby blues for the first time. Seth Riley of the National Park Service was one of the first people to see him in person. The kitten was dubbed P-32. So you got to kind of tag and hold. It's true. P32 in your hands when he was only a month old? Yeah, exactly, a month old, yeah. Aw, what did that feel like? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's always, you know, we almost never see these animals, like, except when we catch them, basically. Soon, P32 outgrew his mother's den, and the dominant males in the area began to perceive him as a threat. It was time for him to find his own territory. But instead of traveling east like P22 had three years before, he went north. And incredibly, he made it across the 101. So that was pretty exciting, actually. You know, that was the third time we've ever had collared animals wow. cross 101. And after roaming a bit in the Simi Hills, he kept going. He crossed Highway 23 and then the larger 118 to the Santa Susana Mountains. We know there's another big male there, P-38. We even saw some times where P-38 seemed to be following P-32, like he was perceiving that wow. he was out there and was like, kind of right behind him. So then 32 crossed 126. North of the 126, past Castaic, are stretches of Los Padres National Forest. It's a wide open territory with space for plenty of lions to roam. After crossing four dangerous freeways, P-32 had almost made it when tragedy struck. We were, keep, we were keeping track of the points, which we do every day. Um, and there was a point like on the freeway. That just wasn't moving. So then we got a call actually from California Department of Fish and Wildlife about a mountain lion hit and killed on the freeway. It was P-32, struck by a vehicle on I-5 on August 10th, 2015. 
the driver left the scene. It was such a blow when he got hit by a car because if you look at his journey on a map, he did what he was supposed to do. He crossed four of the area freeways. He was doing what a good mountain lion should and under the most extreme circumstances, you know, crossing through these urban areas, crossing these freeways, trying to find his own territory. And it looked like he had made it to what we sort of joke the promised land, but he didn't quite get there. Like P-32, P-22's innate desire for his own turf led him far from home. But unlike his unlucky counterpart, he's surviving. Back in Griffith Park, he's nearly invisible to millions of visitors. You know, a ton of people here every day recreating. And yet we have this large carnivore, this mountain lion, and he stays elusive. I can count on one hand the number of confirmed sightings by people. In four years, we've been following him. Even us researchers, when we're out here and we know where he is, we hardly ever see him. At six years of age, he leads a solitary existence. His roaming area is minimal. There's no room for a mate. And he faces another very real threat, rat poison. In early 2014, photos revealed just one of its disturbing effects, mange. Seeing P-22 get it just kind of threw me for a loop because his primary prey was deer, and deer aren't really going after rodenticide uh, pellets too often. So to find him getting rat poison in his system kind of taught us that he's just as vulnerable as these other backyard predators and that he's also eating other things other than deer. How did you feel the first time you saw that picture? It was extremely frightening because I know not only do they die from mange, but they also act a little bit differently, make them more vulnerable possibly to getting hit by a car. So we gave him vitamin K, which counteracts that, and it, he looked much better and yeah. seemed, seemed to be cleared up. But how well can he do in such a small space? And how long will he decide to stay? Top predators like mountain lions have an innate need to roam, which allows their gene pool to diversify. But Southern California pumas are struggling. We've discovered that lions in the Santa Monica's have the lowest genetic diversity ever seen out of any lion population on the West Coast. So that leads to these adult males breeding with their daughters and even granddaughters, we've documented. This type of inbreeding can cause birth defects and eventually an inability to reproduce altogether. And without reproduction, the mountain lions of Southern California could go extinct. It just speaks of the challenges of these cats living in this urban fragmented landscape. It really speaks to the need for connectivity across these freeways and the need for wildlife corridors, either tunnels or landscape bridges, safe connection points for these animals. Researchers and activists are working to build a wildlife crossing of our own over the 101 freeway at Liberty Canyon in Agora Hills. Seth Riley brought me there. So where would the wildlife crossing be? So we would have it go right from, you can see that flat area on the hill on the other side, from mm -hmm. there across the freeway. And then the best would be if it would come across the freeway and across the Gura Road. What it would do is it would connect protected open space that we're standing on right now mm -hmm. to other protected open space to the north and connect in both directions all the way to big chunks of open space to the south, all the way to the ocean, and to the north, all the way to the Santa Susanas. A tale of two pumas, one struck and killed by 3,000 pounds of man-made steel on a dark highway. The other continues to live to this day in the wilderness of Griffith Park, surrounded on all sides by treacherous roads and manicured lawns. We celebrate them and he's inspiring this movement to do something for the cats, but he's not a success story. He is trapped, and he's unable to move. He got to an oasis, but he can't move on and find a home or find a mate. He's a, a lonely boy and uh, will probably never have a family. In early 2016, the National Park Service announced a discovery deep in the Santa Monica Mountains, tucked at the base of a boulder. What do you consider a success story? A successful outcome for these kittens, P46 and P47, would be if they lived to adulthood and P46, the female, had a litter of her own and P47 successfully established a home range of his own. 
Mountain lions are an indicator of ecosystem health, and if they're not making it here, the whole system falls down. If we don't do things to connect this ecosystem, which is highly fragmented, these animals aren't gonna have a future and not just mountain lions. Will these puma kittens be the lucky ones? Will they be the first to find new homes and start a lineage of their own? Years from now, will they have a different tale to tell? I'm Cara Santa Maria for SoCal Connected.